Tonight, I'm going to show you how to make shamrock fudge. Stick around. Greetings, my confectionery compadres, and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. St. Patrick's Day is just around the corner, so I thought it would be appropriate to display a little Celtic pride by making a creamy and tasty fudge that's as green as a jealous leprechaun. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make your own shamrock fudge, as well as suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future videos. And if you stick around after the recipe, I'll share some Irish trivia with you. For this recipe, I used two and a half cups of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream, three quarters of a cup of unsalted room temperature butter, a pinch of salt, 11 ounces of white chocolate chips, seven ounces of marshmallow cream, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, some green gel food color, and some sprinkles. I also used an 8x8 baking pan, some parchment paper, a large bowl, a large saucepan, a couple of spatulas, and a thermometer. Okay, let's make some candy. Line the baking pan and set it aside. Place the white chocolate and marshmallow cream in the bowl and set it aside. Add the sugar, heavy cream, butter, and salt to the saucepan and cook the mixture over medium heat until it boils, stirring continuously. Add the thermometer and continue cooking until it reaches 234 degrees Fahrenheit, adjusted for altitude. Pour the mixture into the bowl, add the vanilla extract and food color, and stir until everything is melted and combined. Add additional coloring as needed. Pour the fudge into the baking pan and top it with sprinkles. Gently press the sprinkles into the fudge so they adhere. Refrigerate the fudge until it's completely set. Remove the fudge from the pan and cut it into whatever size pieces you'd like. And that's it. Okay, let's have a taste. Slanchiva. I don't mean to be immodest, but this is perfect fudge. It's smooth and creamy and melts in your mouth and coats it with a layer of happy. <laughs> And while I really do like making things with layers of flavor that synergize into something greater than the sum of its parts, there is absolutely a place for simplicity. This has one flavor, and that's all it needs. 
And since you can switch out the color and sprinkles to make this a perfect treat for any occasion or no occasion at all, you really ought to try these. On St. Patrick's Day 2011, Irish-American astronaut Catherine Coleman celebrated in space by playing a century-old flute and a tin whistle belonging to the Irish musical group The Chieftains. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the highest number of leaves ever recorded on a single clover stem is 56. That's 14 four-leaf clovers worth of luck. Finally, although St. Patrick is known as the patron saint of Ireland, he was actually born in Roman occupied Britain. At age 16, he was kidnapped by Irish raiders and sold as a slave to a Celtic priest in what's now known as Northern Ireland. Six years later, he escaped back to Britain, became a priest, and returned to Ireland as a Christian missionary. And if you stick around after the recipe, I'll share some, share some, share some. I'll share some, I. I'll share some and sweat sweet sweet sweet. St. Patrick is known as the pay pay the pay.